Okay, we're doing a quick review of exponent rules and setting you up to get ready to do derivatives, um, the shortcut way. All right, you know that there's this rule x to the a times x to the b gives you x to the a plus b, but I'm going to fill in all the stuff between there. I'm going to give you an example. Um, let's do x squared times x cubed and look at what's let's look at what's really really going on not just memorizing rules so x squared is x x and x cubed is x x x and what operation is going on in between all of those x's multiplication okay so they're all multiplying and how many total are there five okay there's five x's they're all multiplying by each other so that is x to the fifth, okay, which we could do x to the two plus three using the rule, but I like thinking about y better. So we're going to have all these different things going on to review exponent rules. All right, let's next do a rule that frequently gets confused, x to the a raised to the b power. I'm not going to give you the rule yet. I'm going to give an example x squared to the third power. So let me be clear, this part here is an example. Example. All right, so x squared to the third. So x squared is what? x times x. x times x. x times x. And what is that to the third power? There's three x squares. There's three x squared. Okay, so here's one of the x squared. Let's make another one and then another one. So there we've got x squared, x squared, x squared, because it was x squared to the third power. So here's our three x squared. They're all multiplied by each other. So how many x's would that be all together? Six. Or how many x's is that all together? They're all right there. Okay, so this time we have x times itself six times, so it's x to the sixth, which does indeed do a times b. So the rule over here is x to the a times b. And I didn't write that the rule is going in this column. I'm messing up all over the place here. Okay, so I'm not as much into memorizing rules as to understanding where they came from. Because um, a lot of people confuse, well, do I add, do I multiply? Don't think do you add, do you multiply. Think about what is happening. So that's much more useful. All right, next is x to the a divided by x to the b. I'm going to give you an example. Let's do x to the third over x to the second. And x to the third means, what does that mean? Uh, three x's. Okay, there's three x's in a row multiplying times each other. So x, 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 and then the x squared. So that's going to give us an x, x on the bottom. And if we look at this, what we end up seeing is that if you have two halves, what does that equal? One. Okay, two halves is one, three-thirds is one, five-fifths is one. So anything over itself gives you a one. So there's a lovely one. Very lovely, right? And we end up with this x, okay, is all that's left because this stuff all cancels itself out. Okay, so x is the same thing as x to the first power, and the rule here that a lot of people have memorized is x to the a minus b. Can you tell that's an x? I hope so. x. How oh, that, that? We made it bigger. x to the a minus b. All right, so next, let's look at another example like this. Let's look at something that might be new to some of you all. x to the third over x to the fourth. We get three x's on the top, four x's on the bottom. These guys cancel out. Okay, they're all gone. And we end up with one over x. And what might be new to some of you all is that you can write this as x to the negative one. Okay? And that makes the rule follow through. This is x to the 3 minus 4. And it all 
kind of just melds. If you haven't done negative exponents yet, you're going to need to practice this some, some. Let me do one more example of that, and then we'll move into what really is going to help you do derivatives. Let's do x to the third over x to the fifth. Again, this is this. One, two, three, four, five. You can cancel out all these guys. Goodbye, goodbye. And you get 1 over xx, which is 1 over x squared, which is x to the negative 2. Okay, which, if you'd use the rule, that's x to the 3 minus 5, which gives you x to the negative 2, which is the exact same thing as 1 over x squared. And when you're calculating stuff, this is probably the easier way to do it. When you're doing stuff with derivatives that we'll be doing soon, this is the easier way to write it. We'll talk about different ways to look at that. So the main thing here, that if you haven't done this before, that you really need to get in your head, is that 1 over x, or x to the 1, see that little invisible 1 there, is x to the negative 1. 1 over x squared is the same as x to the negative 2. So a, a, an exponent in the denominator is a negative exponent when you bring it up. So these you've got to get into your brain. And let's look at one other exponential expression that you may or may not remember. Let's do um, the square root of x. This is called radical form because this thing that some people think of as a house is called a radical. And if we write this in exponential form, exponential form, it's going to be x to the 1 half. And I have a couple ways to remember that. Let me do one more. x to the 2 thirds power and root equals x to the second power, xx, and then you take the third root. So we've got x to anything here and there gives you x to the power over root power over root. And some people remember that because the power, like a light bulb, is inside of the house and roots, even though they're up there, are outside of the house. So power over root. All right, that's the basic way of expressing things. Um, let's go ahead and compute one and then the next video will go into a wonderful, wonderful thing. Do, 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 do coefficient variable exponent that you're going to need to be using all the way through the whole rest of the semester or you'll fail. So just you're going to have to learn how to do this. Right, Shiva? Yep. Yep, yep. If you don't get this, listen to me the first time around. Don't, don't wait till the second time around. Okay, so let's calculate or evaluate something that's given to us in radical form. 8 to the 2 thirds. Probably looks kind of nauseating to some of you, but we're going to rewrite it rewrite in a different way than we'll be rewriting later, but when we're computing, we want it to be this way. Second power, third root. People tend to look at this and want to do it this way first, taking the second power and then the cube root, which is one way to do it. One way. It's harder is to do, look at it as the cube root of 8 squared. What is 8 squared? 64. 64. Why do you know all that stuff in your head? I don't know any of that stuff in my head. Do you also know this cube root of 64 in your head? 4. 4. You just know all this stuff. What is with me? I don't know any of this stuff in my head. Okay, for those of you who are less mathematically brilliant than Shiva, more like me, let's do this another way. Okay, the easy way. Okay, so powers and roots are actually the same thing, like multiplication and division are the same thing, addition and subtraction are the same thing, so it really doesn't matter what order you do them in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this a little differently on my running out of paper paper, and I'm going to do the cube root of 8, and then I'm going to square it. 
the cube root of 8, I can even do that. I'm going to rewrite it one more way for those of you that might not be familiar with cube roots. 8 is 2 times 2 times 2, and cube root takes out triplets, just like square root takes out twins. So the cube root of 8 is just 2, and then we square it, which gives us 4. I think it's easier to make little, make littler than bigger because that's less math in your head and it won't make your head hurt so much. Okay, the next video will be the thing that you have to know to get through calculus with me. Okay, so see you on the next video. Bye.